Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today is World Audio Day and that's the day when we celebrate the power of audio, particularly audio which has been made for drama. On October the 30th every year, World Audio Drama Day celebrates telling stories through sound. And the day also recognizes how audio drama has evolved throughout the years. You know, these days people often look to television, movies, and other forms of visual arts for entertainment. But before that, in the 1940s and 50s, radio was the only source of entertainment. And many of the audio dramas which were made have been largely forgotten, which is a great pity. I know the BBC have one that continues to this day, and it's called The Archers. It's been running since 1951. They use very nice English, and the episodes are very short. It used to be about the life of three farmers living in a fictional town in England. But these days, The Archers is a little bit more sinister because they face the same problems as everyone else. High crime, addiction, uh, unemployment, the same things that we all see and hear about daily. So if you're interested in a British drama, which is a little bit different because it's audio only, then you definitely should try to find The Archers. And uh, it's a very common surname here, Archer. And in case you're wondering what it means, The Archer is the man with the bow and arrow, and he uh, shoots animals with it, or he hits a target with it. That's an archer. And we're going to look at some idioms a little bit later um, regarding archery. There's quite a few of those, surprisingly, in English. So we're going to look at those. But let me tell you, first of all, about one of my favorite radio dramas. If you're looking for complete escapism with a little song and dance in the middle, you know, entertainment with no meaning except to entertain you, then if you go to YouTube, you'll find The Railroad Hour. The Railroad Hour was a radio series of musical dramas and comedies broadcast from the late 1940s to the mid-1950s. It's American, and it has some very famous names. I should really use the past tense, had some very famous names uh, because um, it's long since gone, unfortunately. I think it was broadcast from the late 1940s to the mid-1950s. They're all preserved. They're all on YouTube. And uh, it has a fascinating history. And it's usually very simple language, very simple stories about a man and a woman, you know, who are... Um, uh, maybe walking in the park, and then they both decide to sing. (laughs) Yeah, it definitely is a product of its time. So if you're looking for some kind of Hollywood experience, uh, the Railroad Hour is definitely for you. It's kind of like big band music, you know, it's an extravaganza where they talk, they do a little drama, they sing, It sounds like they're dancing. Uh, So, yeah, very nice. It's very nice. Um, uh, Doris Day, I think, was involved with those. So was uh, Gordon McRae. Um, And they also did... uh, They also did some some really famous episodes. But uh, I'll let you find those for yourself if you're... Uh, interested 
It was sponsored by the Association of American Railroads. And there was like musicals and operettas. Um, some of the, the names involved, Gordon McRae, Gene Holloway, Jerome Lawrence. The list just continues. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in those old time entertainment, it would be a great way to celebrate well, with the audio day, if you want something more modern, definitely check out the Archers. I haven't heard the Archers for ages. <laughs> you know, we have so many choices now uh, with visual entertainment that the audio dramas get lost, don't they? But the BBC was definitely the leader with audio dramas. I mean, some of them are really trashy. <laughs> They weren't all great, but The Archers has a really, really big archive on the BBC. So, something to think about there. Right, let's do some idioms about archery. Now, this is really interesting because archery was a very famous sport here. And, in fact... Uh, I remember locally in this area, they used to have um, an archery day where they would go to the top of the church tower and fire, um, they would fire uh, a bow. So let's, um, let's have a look at some of these. So the first one here is straight as an arrow. Okay, which is referring to something or someone going in a direct straight line or being honest and forthright. So if someone in English is considered to be very straight or as straight as an arrow, it means they always tell the truth. They, they don't mess around with politeness. They are quite direct. And you might hear some people in English saying, just ask him to be straight with you. Ask him to tell you exactly what's happening, you know, because a lot of people here wander around politeness and uh, it's a problem because you can get mixed messages. Oh, I don't think I want to do that today it means go away and leave me alone. <laughs> it's very hard to understand. So sometimes we have to ask people, just tell me straight, what's the problem? You know, so as a characteristic, some people are as straight as an arrow. Um, some people like straight people in that way, people who are straight with communication and other people don't because we spend a lot of time dancing around the subjects without talking to each other. Now, of course, the other meaning of this is referring to people's sexuality uh, there's a lot of guesswork happens as to who's sleeping with who. And uh, we often use the word straight to refer to people who aren't gay. So to say, oh, no, he's as straight as an arrow or as straight as a laser beam may also be referring to someone's sexual preferences. So that's good to know as well. Another very common one is off the mark. Now, this is one that I use a lot, okay? And that's when uh, someone makes an assumption and they're wrong, okay? So if someone tells me, oh, Joseph, you know, um, I think that nobody likes me, okay? I could say, I think you're a little bit off the mark there. Or to be more direct, you're definitely off the mark there because I know a lot of people who like you, you know. Or another thing, just another example, okay, might be if someone's learning English and they do very, very well, but let's say they get maybe two or three conditional sentences wrong. I can say, oh, your conditionals are very, very good, but you're just a little bit off the mark off the targets is what it means, okay? So something which is just a little bit off the mark is usually something which has just missed the target, but we can also use it to 
correct someone who's made an assumption about something. Oh, I don't like John because uh, 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 he's always very rude to me. Well, I think you're a bit off the mark there. John's actually very nice, you know. Or if someone comes to you with gossip, you know, and they they want to tell you about uh, why they think the company is going to fail. Oh, you know, I heard there was a meeting yesterday uh, between the bosses. And from that meeting, I think we're all going to be out of a job next year. You could say, no, I think you're a bit off the mark there. Our boss wouldn't let that happen. Uh, how do you know? Okay, so there we are, off the mark. Okay, when you don't really have an understanding of something and someone corrects you, they say you're a bit off the mark. It means you've kind of almost got it, but I don't think it's right. And it's used when someone makes an assumption or if someone is just wrong maybe doesn't have the info about something. You may have had another one, a shot in the dark. This is another one that I use, and it's when you make a guess about something that you know nothing about. So if someone says, Joseph, what's the capital of Australia? And I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if that's Melbourne or Sydney um, I don't know, do I have to choose one of those? And the man says, yes, you do. Okay, what's the capital city of Australia? You have five seconds. I can say, well, I honestly don't know, but I'll take a shot in the dark. Okay, I'll, I'm going to go for Melbourne. There we are, a shot in the dark. So it's when you make an uninformed guess about something, a shot in the dark. Um... Someone asked me the other day uh, on italki, they said, okay, what country do you think I'm from? And I'm thinking, mm, with an accent like that, I don't know. I don't know. So I said to them, I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say Hungary. And I was right. I was <laughs> quite surprised, quite surprised. Now, the response to that, a shot in the dark, is to be uh, wide of the mark and that means far from the targets to be wide of the mark now this is interesting okay because in English here in the UK at least we always say wide off the mark but the proverb itself is actually wide of the mark okay and it means far away from the target so if I say Aha, uh -huh, Hungary. Uh, the pastor might say, no, you're wide of the mark there. They probably would say wide off the mark because that's the way we always say it. You're wide off the mark there. I would say, oh, let me try again. Um, Slovakia. There we are. So a shot. if you take a shot in the dark, it's something. You could be right or you could be wide off the mark. But remember, it's wide of the mark is the correct idiom. But you're going to hear off. I always use it with off. Okay. So lots of idioms here about archery. It's something I've never really been very interested in. I had an uncle who used to do the papingo shoots. And I never understood why they used that word, papingo. Uh, but anyway... Uh, there was a famous shoot near here when I was a child called the Papingo shoot. I don't know if they still do it when they were they were shooting an arrow, uh, or as I mentioned earlier, firing an arrow. Some people use that verb instead. Let's do another one. Oh, to bow out. Yeah, that's that's a famous one. I'm sure you've you've heard of that. It, it means to withdraw or to retire. To bow out is to say that you're leaving and you go. Uh, so you can imagine an archer stepping back after taking a shot uh, and then the next person comes along. That was referring to is bowing out. And we use it a lot 
especially when people are leaving, doing something different, they can often say, okay, I'm going to bow out, so I will catch you all later. Actually, last night I had visitors. Yeah, honestly, my apartment sometimes is like the United Nations, okay? So, of course, uh, I have the family from Venezuela, and then uh, a Polish lady came to visit with her friend who was Scottish but married to a Pakistani man. Uh, and so she brought her child who's half British, half Pakistani. Honestly, my apartment is like the United Nations sometimes, uh, especially on Skype. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, another one, and I'll make this the last one, okay, is to end on a high note. Um, and in archery, this actually means something, apparently. So an end in archery refers to a round of arrows being shot. So ending on a high note would mean finishing a set of tasks or events successfully to end on a high note, okay? So if you're doing a project and you finish it well, you end on a high note. That's very common in... Um, in uh, British business English, I don't know about um, I don't know about American English, but definitely for me, the ones which are most common there, um, uh, wide off the mark, or you could simply say just off the mark. Oh, you're off the mark there. Uh, you're wide off the mark. Okay, so those two are are quite famous. I certainly would use those. Bow out, yeah, I use that one. End in a high note, I use that one as well. And a shot in the dark, I always use. Mm, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark. You hear that a lot on quiz shows, you know. I haven't seen a quiz show on TV for ages. I used to love those ones with the big boards, and you had to guess the answer. We had one here called Catchphrase, which was all about idioms. Uh, you might find that on YouTube, actually. Um, it was a little bit strange because, of course, a lot of idioms here are original. But if you can't, if you can't find that TV show Catchphrase from the 80s and 90s on YouTube, that would be perfect for you. Uh, they show you a picture, and then you have to guess the the proverb or idiom that's being shown. For example, if they wanted to say, um, uh, let me just think of one of the ones that we've done, a shot in the dark, they would show you a black screen and a man firing an arrow to a target that he doesn't know or that he can't see. And then you'd have to say, mm, what, what proverb could that be? Uh, or what idiom is that? And then, of course, it's kind of obvious, you know, man firing arrow or even a gun in this case, because we're using the word shot. Uh, you see the bullet moving across the screen, but it's dark and he doesn't know. That would be a shot in the dark. It takes a bit of practice, especially these days, because none of us, none of us really um, uh, watch TV shows anymore. Yeah. And um, by the way, that bag that archers keep their arrows in, uh, it's called a quiver, a quiver. And uh, you might hear English people saying, oh, I was so scared, you know, when the murderer was in the house, I was quivering with fear. Yeah, quivering with fear. So there we are. There's some, some uh, idioms about archery. I'd forgotten how important archery was in our culture. So lots of idioms about... Uh, about uh, archery and archers. I haven't seen anyone doing archery for ages. 
Um, oh, a bit dangerous though, isn't it? I wouldn't like to be strolling across the park if people are practicing archery, <laughs> especially new people in case I get hit. Um, I think as a child we used to have uh, quivers and bows, but the arrows had those rubber suction caps on the ends, so you couldn't really harm anyone, although you could certainly hit them, that's for sure. You know, here where I'm living, it's golf is the big thing. And that's another thing, you know. You don't want to be walking across a golf course when there's new players there. Oh, no, no. Um, I wouldn't trust anyone around here with a golf course uh, if they've got a golf club in their hand. And that's it from me. Okay, so I'll see you all again soon, and I wish you an excellent day. Bye.